Welcome to Scry Babies. I'm Lewis Stardust. And I'm Cowboy of the Vast. Saddle up, babies, because today we're talking about Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Yeehaw! <laughs> uh, we got a full set review for you today, and we're very excited. This is a set that you and I have been, like, very stoked about. We've been talking about it since last year. We this have. is, like, kind of what we were expecting to be one of our favorites, and, like, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty good about it. I am feeling really good about it. Uh, opened up all the packs immediately as they came in and did not wait. I was like, I'm going to I'm gonna treat myself. Maybe I'll open a pack a day or two. No, I ripped no, it all open. It's really hard to. Like Actually, I kept my collector's booster sealed because I'm going to do some like ASMR pack opening in like a Western outfit. And it, I've been like stressed because I just want to see the cards mm-hmm. already. Yeah. Good on you. Not yeah. me. Could not be me not normally, me. but I'm trying to be better with my content stuff. Uh, so yeah, we're going to get into that full set review but first this episode is sponsored by tcg player we would like to thank tcg player for sponsoring this podcast outlaws of thunder junction is coming up so if you're looking to get any of the pre-cons the play boosters or some of those collector boosters be sure to check out tcg player the link is in our description below we had a chance to check out the new pre-cons and also there's tons of new cards. So if you want to get those singles for those new Outlaw Wanted posters, we also have those like kind of from the vault epilogue cards that were put out, which are really cool. And outside of that, there's lots of pre-cons and brand new commanders. So if you want to get any of the cards that sound really cool or ones that we've been posting about or talking about in general, you can go to TCG Player to find everything you're looking for for this set. Yeah, and you can be sure to find the best prices. And don't forget that these standard showdowns are coming up at the end of April, beginning of May. So if you're looking to buy your new standard deck, you can check out TCG Player to get all those singles that you need. So lots of hot new cards, lots of hot new singles. Again, you can shop for singles, you can shop for sealed product. Everything you need is on TCG Player. Thank you again to TCG Player for sponsoring this episode. And today's featured patron is Killian. Thank you so much, Killian, for being a patron. If you would like to become a subscriber of our Patreon, we have tiers as low as one US dollar. It is a great way to support the show. We also have some cool stickers and tokens that we send out every month and a thriving Discord community where you can help us think of podcast topics or help us brew some decks or play some games. It's a great place, so come check it out. The link is in the description below. So as of the time of recording this today, Wizards put out the like official trailer. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you got a chance to watch the video. I know you looked at the cards and stuff online too, but it was pretty good. It's like probably one of my favorite trailers because it's so silly. And I know that when I was at MagicCon, I sat in in the panel where they were talking about Thunder Junction and Rosewater basically said this is like a set like concept they've been wanting to do for a long time. And you could tell that it's just silly and it's fun and it's something that like they put their heart into and... I'm just really excited for this. So if you go on the website to read the the overall concept, it basically says that um, this is a brand spanking new frontier for the plane of Thunder Junction. Everyone's streaming in from across the multiverse to be an outlaw here. So better practice your draw if you want to score big. Uh, this is like really cute. I, again, talking about the trailer, I love that Tiny Bones is a featured person. I think the the crew that we're seeing as the outlaws is really yes. fun and unique. Yes. Um, I'm happy Oko's back. The whole trailer was just basically Oko being really hot. Um, <laughs> and I also read the stories, which I don't normally read the stories for these sets. Um, but I did for the commander deck that I'm going to be playing, which is, uh, I believe his name is Yuma, the, the yeah, Mandalorian, the essentially. Yeah. The dad. Uh, that was a great story. And if you haven't had a chance to read it, I rec- really would recommend it. Um, but yes, I'm excited for it. So I'm excited too. Um, I think it's going to be really fun. I'm excited to play all the new mechanics and the new cards that come out. Uh, I feel like this is going to have a lot of heavy hitters that are, you're going to see mm-hmm. maybe last for a while. I know a lot of sets come out and we'll see like, oh, this card's pretty good here and there. And then they kind of, you know, phase out when the next big thing comes around. Uh, but from the stuff that we've been seeing in Thunder Junction, a lot of these cards look like they're here to stay. Um, and they're very thematic and campy. And I love it. I love when things are campy. And I feel like, you know, um, the Western thing is a great way to start with that. I actually looked up yesterday on Google if there was ever any other like Western type thing. And I believe it or not, I found a bunch of Reddit threads of people who were begging for a Jace that was a cowboy. Oh, well, they got. And I'm like, wow, these people manifested Thunder Junction because look at it now. I love that. I think it's something that's really exciting because Western is something that we're all very familiar with, right? We grew up watching things like that. Um, there's, you know, I made a joke the other day on uh, Saffron Olive's post where he was like, what's the best Western movie? And I said, if I will goes West. Uh, but, you know, we have a lot of history with those things and we we both enjoy country music. Look at Tori right now. I, I, today I actually found the term on TikTok called a buckle bunny. Oh. 
That's yeah. cute. It's it's a buckle bunny. It's it's people who um are not from like Western backgrounds and like aren't ranch hands or farmers, but they just like love country music and the culture. And I was like, oh, I am such a buckle bunny. I guess. But... I guess it's like yeah, I like that a lot better for a term. I yeah, it sounds you... cute. Sounds less like demeaning. So I was like, this is fun. Uh, love it. Me and my boots and my Alan Jackson t-shirt. I'm a big Western and uh, country music fan. I'm going very alternative today. I'm wearing uh a, like a. I feel like this is. I'm the Olivia pre-Constan, you know what I mean? I'm yes. in my black. I got like little spider webs going on in fringe and we're going to be dressed up for our pre-con episodes So make sure you give that a watch too. And we'll get into those things later. But you mentioned mechanics. And so uh, this set has, of course, brand new cards, brand new mechanics and cool reprints that we're going to talk about in a bit. But let's get into those mechanics first, because I think it's the easiest way to talk about a set. Absolutely. So we have a couple new mechanics to go over. The first one we have is committing a crime. So you've heard this before. Uh, It's very clever, very silly. A player commits a crime as they are casting a spell, activating an ability, or putting a triggered ability on the stack that targets at least one opponent, at least one permanent spell or ability an opponent controls, and or at least one card in an opponent's graveyard. I think it's so funny that they're calling it committing a crime. Yeah. I think that's a thing people say when we play Magic anyways. Yeah, like you're committing a crime. Yeah. And it also like ties into, um, I know that, they have like these wanted posters now, mm-hmm. treatments of cards and planeswalkers. So like they committed a crime, now they're on the wanted poster. Um, I love that. And there's also like these big spells that they're reprinting um, that, you know, aren't, there's a notion thief, right? That's like definitely not the most fun card ever for a creature. There's definitely like some big spells that we're going to talk about later too that are not the nicest. Uh, yeah, so, so you're it, committing a crime. And it fits really well into that and being like kind of like the the bad guy at the table. But we're all kind of outlaws in this and I think that's really cute and Exactly. Clever. The next one we have is plot. So if you're getting ready to pull off a heist, you'll need to concoct a plot. Uh, so you can pay a card's plot cost, which means you pay it and you exile that card and then you can cast it on a later turn without paying its mana cost. So it's similar to like foretelling a card. Um, I think this is really cool. The new Jace that actually got previewed today has a really busted thing where you can, like, uptick a card and, like, plot something and play it later. I I don't remember off the top of my head. I know it's in here somewhere. Uh, but yeah, plot seems like a mechanic that's gonna be absolutely busted. I love a twofer. I love being able to do something and then worry about it later. Pretty cool. Yeah. And the fact that it's called plot just makes it, like... It has like a double entendre there. It's like plot, like you're burying it, like you know, plot, <laughs> like plot like land, crops, but, also plot in but you're also plotting something, yeah. and I, I love that. I like that you're saying it's kind of like a foretell card because I think it's like we obviously just had a new set mechanic that came out with MKM, which was called disguise, no. cloak, cloak, yeah. and so I feel like I like that at least if they're different they're like kind of similar to something you could reference so that if you're not good at remembering all the new stuff like me because there's so many new things that happen it's like a small reference guide which makes it a lot easier for new people or you know a new set yes uh the next key action which i am thrilled about is called saddle Mm -hmm. uh so saddle is similar to i guess you would say like crewing with vehicles uh, you could tap any number of t- other untapped creatures you control with a power X or greater to saddle X. Uh, so it's very similar to crew. And it's not just an ability that a creature has. It's something true about that creature. It doesn't just stop being saddled when it leaves the battlefield or the turn ends. Uh, it's pretty cool. We've seen a bunch of new creatures come out that are have this saddle mechanic on them. We have a couple that are our favorites. I know I saw one that was a possum and I like (laughs) freaked out and screamed because possums are like one of my favorite animals and it's adorable. I love the thought of a magic character riding on a giant possum. Uh, And we also have this insane one called the Caustic Bronco up on the screen. (laughs) Uh, So this one's awesome. I'm just going to read this one card out because it is insane. It is one in a black. It is a snake horse. So that caught me off guard immediately because I was like, you know what? They've gone too far. They, they made have a snake horse. quite a couple of these weird snake horse things. Yeah. yeah. So this one says, whenever Caustic Bronco attacks, you can reveal the top card of your library and put it into your hand. You lose life equal to that card's mana value if Caustic Bronco isn't saddled. Otherwise, each opponent loses that much life. As like a Yuriko stan, this card's awesome. And it's got saddle three. So I, I think this card's amazing. I think it's really, really fun. Um, I love that it has, like, like the losing the life and flipping cards off the top. Yeah. I love that. I think that's so much fun. And it's so cheap. And it's also a 2-2. Two-two. 
Yeah, you mentioned the possum, which mm-hmm. I saw that right away, and I was like, Tori's winning. And then in Fallout, <laughs> I got uh, a, a sloth, and I feel like our two favorite things are being represented yes. in Magic, and I'm thrilled about it. Um, I also was really stoked about the Gitrog. Yes, Gitrog we, looks... We got to see Thalia ride him, and it, now we're getting the opportunity to mount Gitrog, which sounds really wrong, and I am upset with the phrasing I just did, but... Uh, <laughs> it's cool it's a giant trust frog. us it's cool it is cool dude and trust me i'm not surprised uh that they went with this kind of mechanic or like keyword right i think it's a really smart thing to do and i think it's silly and fun and people will enjoy doing that agreed and you were right there was another mechanic there is there's also spree which not like the candy like the western I, that was the first thing i thought of when i saw sprees <laughs> i was like oh i love sprees Sprees are cool. They are basically, it's actually, I think, the first time we've seen something like this. The spree appears on the top of the magic card over the mana symbol. It looks like a little plus sign. Uh, So you can pay the cost of your card that you're casting, and it will have additional spell-like type things on it. Kind of like a choose one or more card, but you just pay additional costs for each one, and it's called spree. These are really cool. Uh, I looked through a couple of them so far, and... I think some of them had the potential to be just really, really good, especially in like limited formats. This is unique. I love that. I I love something that gives you multiple options on a card, especially with the way that they framed it with like you could pay extra, kind of like kicker costs and stuff. I love cards like that. Yeah, I I noted that this is a very neat thing. (laughs) Yes. And I think it's really cool. I think it's the thing I'm most excited about besides the mounts. Um, But now that we've covered our mechanics, let's get into the new stuff. You mentioned there's a new Jace. People are thrilled. Yes. I Yeah, I'm excited about this one. Yeah, we have Jace reawakened, the new Jace Planeswalker. Uh, this card looks like it's going to be insane. A- actually busted for two mana Jace, and like you can plus one, draw a card, discard a card, so you're looting just by upticking Jace, which is pretty crazy. Uh, or you can exile a non-land card with a mana value three or less from your hand, and it becomes plotted. Also insane. And then it's um, ult is until end of turn, whenever you cast a spell, you can copy it and choose new targets for the copy. The only downside of Jace is that you can't cast it during your first, second, or third turn of the game. But who cares? It's two mana. And if you have four of them in your deck, like, I think we're going to see this Jace a lot. I think it's going to be a really popular card. I also feel like you can just, like, take some extra turns, (laughs) right? Like, get an early extra turn thing and then just play Jace a lot quicker and you could do whatever. I I think it's a silly condition. Um, and it makes sense, I guess, like maybe the card can be really good and maybe you can mess with it, especially because it's got two plus one abilities and it comes in at three. Um, so I get that. But I yeah, there's definitely ways you can manipulate the game a little bit and get him out a little bit quicker, I think. Uh, but that's a really cool card. I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that. And I think we get one Planeswalker every set, right? That's what they're doing. But mm-hmm. w- this one we get two. Yeah. We have Oko. We have Oko. Yeah, we've seen the Oko. We'll throw him up on here. Um, Magali did the art for this. It is gorgeous. He looks beautiful. I know that there's also an Oko reprint in the set. Yes. So we got that cool poster kind of style like that they have for the crimes, I believe. Um, yes. So Oko's back. And I didn't realize this, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's Kellen's dad based on lore is what I was looking at. Yeah, I was seeing that too. I mean, yeah. I can see the resemblance. Yeah, and I think like in the most respectful way, I have not cared for that character. It has not interested me. Any of the cards I've seen for them have not been like on my radar. Yeah. But I will say I read the story and it's basically just about Oko being a shitty dad. <laughs> it's kind Oko's of... Oko's a shitty dad. Yeah, it's kind of the funniest like thing ever. It's very relatable, but... um. You know, I sorry, that was maybe that was too much, but it's really funny and I enjoy that kind of concept. And um, yeah, it, it was a little heartbreaking. It's actually pretty sad and it was a good story. So I enjoyed reading that, too. I'm going to have to go read that story now. Yeah. Now, now it's too relatable. We're all going to have to go read it. With the new Jace, we also have a bunch of very cool new cards. So we're going to get into this. We have new commanders that are really cool. Of course, the new precons, which we'll talk about. We also have um, the epilogue cards that they were planning on doing, which we knew wasn't coming back because they weren't as successful with sales. So they put them into this set as kind of like the vault cards. So after, you know, you do all of your adventuring as, uh, what would they call them? A criminal? <laughs> I guess. Oh, an outlaw. An outlaw. Uh, The thematic part is supposed to be at the end. There's this big, you know, uh, place to loot. And here are all those cool artifacts and cards. So we'll get into those as well. We'll kind of go between them and we'll try to do each topic if we can. But there's a lot of cool stuff. So um, one that we both put was the Lost Jite. (laughs) Yeah. Lost Jite is an insane card. 
Uh, it's a reason it's a mythic rare because it's pretty busted. It is a one mana artifact. Uh, whenever equipped creature deals combat damage, you put a charge counter on Lost Gite. Also, it's only one mana to equip. Uh, you can remove a charge counter from Lost Gite and choose one. You can either untap target land, target creature can't block this turn, or you can put a plus one, plus one counter on an equipped creature. I'm wondering if this will go in hammer. I would love that. I think it's I, really cool. I think it's really cool. I think the other GTA is a really good card too, so I'm excited to see like oh, this yeah. version of a GTA. Yeah. This this one looks looks sick. Uh the other two cards that I grabbed that I thought looked pretty cool uh were Greed's Gambit. This is another one of those like little vault symbols. Uh it is an enchantment for three and a black. When it enters the battlefield, you draw three cards, gain six life, and you create three two one black bat creature tokens with flying. We have, I've said it before. I love a twofer. This is a threefer. This is awesome. At the beginning of your end step, you discard a card, lose two life, and sacrifice a creature. And when it leaves the battlefield, you discard three cards, lose six life, and sacrifice three creatures. So you have to put them all back if it leaves the battlefield. But this seems like a pretty cool card. Just the fact that you get to draw three cards, gain life, and create these bats for, you know, essentially no drawbacks. It's great. The other artifact out that I think is insane is the Sword of Wealth and Power. I love the swords that come out in all of these sets. Uh, every time a new sword is printed, I'm, that's like the first card I'm chasing after. This one is very different. We've seen the court, like the swords that have a protection from colors. Uh, this one, the creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from instants and from sorceries. Uh, I think this is pretty different. I don't think I've seen this on an equipment before. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you create a treasure token, and when you next cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn, you copy it and choose new targets for the copy. This one has, like, a wall of text on it, but it looks really cool and just... Uh, yeah, when they said wealth and power, they weren't kidding. Between the treasures and protection and everything else, I just think there's no drawbacks to this sword whatsoever. Um, I was happy to open two of them. Yeah, you're an artifacts girly and like am. a like a artifacts equipment like auras. So I felt like this set had a lot of really good stuff for you. Yes, yes <laughs> you got did. spoiled between like the equipment kind of like deck with Fallout with like reprints and other some goodies like that, and then this set that has like a bunch of new cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, one that I really thought was cool was the Crackling Spell Slinger. Uh, so it's three colorless and two red for a 2-2 two -two with flash. And when this card enters the battlefield, if you cast it, the next instant or sorcery spell you cast this turn has Storm. So I thought it could be like a really cool card for, I don't know, red decks and things that care about Storm, of course. But it just seemed really cool to me, especially with the flash effect. I like anything that has flash. Yeah. Um, another card I thought that was really cool was the Smirking Spelljacker, which also has flash. And it's a 3-3 three, three that flies for four colorless and a blue. When it enters the battlefield, you exile target spell and opponent controls. And then whenever it attacks, if a card is exiled with it, you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost. So I thought that was also pretty cool. Uh, I like, again, anything that has flash, especially a little flash flyer that comes in. That one had me really excited. And then there was a card that I thought might be okay, um, Smoldering Stagecoach. So it's three colors and a red, and then its power is equal to the number of incident sorcery cards in your graveyard. It is an artic artifact vehicle. And whenever it attacks, the next instant spell and the next sorcery spell you cast this turn each have Cascade. So I love Spell Slinger decks, especially like Is It ones. So I thought this one could be really fun. And then I love the art for it too. It's a very like Western, like yeah. end of the movie moment, like moment. Um, and yeah, it's it's a crew for two. So it's it's a pretty cool card. I thought that was a really fun one as well. Oh my God, there's so much cool stuff. And we'll get into some of the other ones in a minute because I'm looking at cards and I want to talk about them, but it's it's not the moment. Let's get into those thematic cards. Thematic cards. I see that we both wrote down Back in Town. Yes. Which I loved because I read it and I just started seeing like the boys are back in town. Yes. Over and over again. I also really loved the Holy Cow one because it's just a pun in itself and it's majestic and the art for that one. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's great, and it's also legal and pauper, so I'm already happy about it. It's Flash Flying Tutu. My favorite. Your favorite. That's my favorite. And it enters the battlefield, you gain two life, and scry one. Uh, there has to be a cow deck in pauper, and if not, there will be. Uh, and I also saw this cute little guy, not that he's really thematic to westerns, but he's Armored Armadillo. I loved it, yeah. And he's one mana, zero, four. But he's got Ward 1, and you can pay to give him plus X plus O until end of turn where X is his toughness for 4 mana. I thought he was such a cute little guy. 
it made me start singing like the little TikTok song of like armadillas keep digging. And I was just, I was so happy. I loved him. And then what else did you put down? I put rumbleweed because we had been talking about our predictions, which she, we we had some predictions for what would be in this set. Yes. And so we got a freaking tumbleweed. It's 10 colorless and a green. Yes. Okay. And it costs one less for each land card in your graveyard, which works probably great with the pre-con commander deck. Um, with vigilance, reach, and trample, it's an 8-8. Eight, eight. And when it enters the battlefield, other creatures you control get plus three and gain trample until end of turn. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. It's, it's so, so stupid. Good. I'm so glad that they included a tumbleweed. Yeah. Um. And then the other card I put down here for themes is they put Jolene, the plundering pugilist. Yeah. Pugli- pugilist. I don't. I don't know what that <laughs> word is. Pugilist. But I. It's Jolene. We love Jolene. We Jolene. Love, yeah. She's the Dolly Parton song. I'm glad they <laughs> used Jolene. Uh, she looks pretty cool. I love a red green creature that you can make into a commander. She's got a weird little cobra They're mount back, thing. Back with those snake horse things, man. Snake horse things going on there. Uh, she looks like a cool commander. I wouldn't mind building her. But the fact that they they just shoved in Jolene to me, I was like, this is a Dolly Parton reference. It has I to be. know it is. I believe it. We got any nine to fives in there? No. No nine to fives. Nine to fives. No, working my nine to five to afford every, everything in this set is the nine to five. They also have a card. I can't remember the name of it, but it's got like a little snake in the boot, right? And then we had, uh, you know, Death um, Before Sunrise. And- yeah, there's a card called Poison the Waterhole, I think. Mm-hmm. Classic things. Back in Town, which is um, X and two colors and a black. Return X target outlaw creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So it's like very thematic. The art for them, I think, is like perfect art direction for this yep. set i'm very excited about it um there was a card i thought that was cool too it's two red and x and it's called cataclysmic prospecting which prospecting is like a, a western thing stinky pete yeah the prospector uh, <laughs> so it deals x damage to each creature for each mana from a desert spell to cast this spell you make a tap treasure token and i feel like this set also i guess every set now is like a treasure set like ever since nuka pen i feel like everything has been so treasure focused but especially this one because you're looting and you're getting money and i thought that was a really cool one yeah my gosh there's so many big spells in this one (laughs) uh now we've talked about some cool cards let's talk about our hit commanders our favorite ones things we want to build what is exciting you about this set uh, so you put down one of my favorites, which is Felix Five Boots. Oh my gosh, it's so silly. <laughs> it's so stupid. I love it. I love the boots. I love that he actually has five boots on. Uh, so he's a pretty cool commander. He has two, a black, green, and a blue. And he's got Menace and Ward too. Anything that has Ward now, everyone's just like terrified of, which I love because mm-hmm. I think it's just hysterical. Uh, he's a 5-4. And if a creature you control dealing combat damage to a player causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to a trigger... It triggers an additional time. He's triggered. He's so triggered, Mr. <laughs> Five Boots. Uh, this yeah, art he's, is stupid. He's, he's an ooze <laughs> rogue. He's got all of his boots on. He's got some like his little cowboy hat in the midst of all of his ooze. He's got his gun just like stuck it's inside also a of tiny him. Hat. He's also got like multiple hands, but only two gloves. Yeah, and they're I, fingerless gloves. He's real silly. I love ooze decks. I have like an ooze type of mimeoplasm deck, um, just because I think the oozes are silly. But I feel like this will definitely be taking over as a new commander for me. And it's just really ridiculous and silly. One we also really loved was Kiri. Yes, uh, the little baby. The little baby. So this is the second option for the Naya Precon. So if you didn't want to play Yuma, you could play this. Um, and we love plants. We're plant girlies. We so when I saw girlies. this, I was like, Tori, they made a card for us and we have to play it. Uh, it is a 0-3 legendary plant druid for Naya and one colorless. And other plants and tree folks you get get plus 2 plus O. Oh. At the beginning of your post-combat main phase, return target plant, tree folk, or land card from your graveyard to your hand. So I think this is really fun. Um, there hasn't really been a great viable plant commander. No. Uh, I love tree folk, and I was actually making a mono green tree folk deck, but now I think I'm going to put all those cards into this instead. And then you guys do the lands thing. It seems pretty fun. It does look fun. I actually just put together a deck list. Um, I'm going to have to tinker around with it because there's new cards now with the set. Um, and I built it based off of just one card I saw coming out, which was uh, Bristly Bill. Yes. 
I, I, I'm not going to give out too much. You'll, you'll see him by the time this is out, what he does. I won't divulge too much about the deck because I do want to play it on the show. But as soon as I saw Bristly Bill, I was like, he's got Uncle Energy. Yep. Uh, I'm going to build him, build a landfall deck, something I haven't ever done before. So I did. It's in I the think works. We're, we're both going for the landfall. Yeah. It's not something we normally do. So I've been trying to find different archetypes no. besides going to combat and beating uh, yeah, face, same. which is what we do. Mine is always just like, oh, give it a sword and go. And now I'm like, what if, what if I ramped? What's my, <laughs> I love that we're on this landfall journey <laughs> together. Um, my favorite card that came from the set that I think is going to be really, really cool is Loot, the key to everything. And again, I don't know why this set has me very thematically into stories, but I've been looking for any info on him. And I think based on other cards we were seeing, he's probably like, I don't know. I think he's like a little time jumper based on this art. And I think he yeah. is really going to be the key to like whatever story is going on because yeah. we see him in another art that i'll have up here on the screen as we're talking about it which makes me think that he's going to be jumped his, around his tail also looks like it has some kind of little like magical yeah powers. so he's so cute and stupid looking i love him he's a teamer deck which i love teamer deck so you literally just pay one of each for a one two with ward one there it is wards back wards back and at Better the beginning of your ever. upkeep <laughs> exile the top x cards of your library where x is the number of card types among other non-land permanents you control you may play those cards this turn so you get to just play a bunch of weird creatures yeah be like artifact creatures or like enchantment ones or other weird things and just play all those online permanents and do silly stuff ian also said there might be like a weird cdh thing you do with this deck i don't know about that but either way i think it's a really cool card concept and i'm excited to see more of this little critter hopefully in the future so we are going to talk a little bit about those new pre-cons uh we have a gameplay episode coming out i believe it's next week depending on when this video goes live or it might be already out but you can check it out on our channel uh, and we got a chance to play the new pre-cons. Uh, we haven't done it at the time of recording, so we're just going to say it's going to be a good game because I, I know it's going to be a good game because we're actually upgrading these pre-cons. So, uh, we're doing 10 cards at 50 bucks, which is what everybody on YouTube voted for. And we're giving you more of a, like, you know, we can play the pre-cons of course, but we're going to give you the option to, um, upgrade it yourself. You can also tell us what you would make for swaps instead. Uh, but each of these decks I think are pretty good off the back like we've opened them and looked through them already. yeah there's some pretty solid reprints in there yeah. um and they're all pretty busted like i know i'm playing olivia the opulent outlaw i love a mardu deck obviously it's my whole namesake uh but this one does focus on getting treasures and sacking treasures like you said the treasure mechanic is something like you know making treasure something that they're really into right now yeah uh also they have a gaunti Gonti's the deck sick. is insanely powerful. Uh, I think there's going to be like a lot of cool ways to build the commanders that come in here. And like the second commanders that come with these also are really fun. Yeah. Are awesome. I, I can't remember his name, so I'm literally just going to call him the guy. The like banker looking guy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy with the mustache. I can't. I don't like how he looks. He just like something about him makes me nervous, man. Yeah. yeah. He's a he's a guy. He's definitely like, you know, has has multiple businesses. He's open yeah. and launders money. He's the Sopranos uh, like S kind of. Yes. Yeah. He's in the Olivia precon and I literally pulled it out and I looked at Steve and I was like, I think I want to like build a deck around this guy. Um. So yeah, give it up for the guy. Um, yeah, he looks pretty cool. I'm excited to play these. I'm excited to go shop around because at the time of recording, I have not upgraded this deck yet. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to think of what I want to do, but there's so many good cards. How am I going to spend only 50 bucks? Yeah, I'm playing the Yuma one, uh, Yuma Proud Protector. Uh, as soon as these decks came out, I told Tori, I was like, I either want the little baby or I want Olivia. And we kind of wanted the same deck. So we just agreed on whatever we wanted uh, and I think it worked out well because I think they suit us both very well um, and again these two decks in particular I think are, are play style which yeah. is really fun um, I was worried because this deck is so expensive for the commander because it's five colorless and then three colored for the six six right but it's yeah. one less for each land card in your graveyard which is what the deck is going to do um, my upgrades are going to be revolving around like a couple land changes and then um, some probably like an exploration type of card that will let you play those extra lands or, or yeah. get things from your graveyard um there's also some cool creatures that we could do some cool combo stuff with which i'm working on as well and i think like 10 cards is a reasonable upgrade right like it i is. think that's not taking away too much from the pre-con um you know like you could put the most busted card of your life in there if you really wanted to but i think letting like letting there be a limit of 50 bucks really like lets us to have a higher ceiling and be flexible but without being too much from the original that's concept. right and it's also like 10 cards is just enough to where you change it a little bit because if you only change like if you put one expensive card in there are you actually going to draw it you don't know yeah it's 
one of 100. So it's hard. But doing 10 and doing it with 50 bucks, that's also like a reasonable amount to spend. If you're someone who just likes to buy the pre-cons, upgrade them a little bit and keep yeah the other two ones uh you did mention the gaunty one and then there is a stella lee which is a is it spell slinger deck i love me some is it i know ian was really excited to play this one and i think all four of them are just really cool concepts i also love that we're getting full art cards for the commanders now so mm-hmm. we're getting like a nice full art right in there instead of like the like bulky cards that they were doing for yeah a bit. they got rid of that weird cardboard yeah card like it was front. just kind of like a divider for me i don't really yeah. know what it was being i, I used think for. it was just to because they used to have the commander the in the ones. front and it would curl. Yeah. So they put the big one there yeah. to not curl. But now it's like, just put it in the box. Just print it out. This is good. Uh, so yeah, I'm very happy with the overall construction of them. And like the reprints in there, I think are pretty good. I don't know what the actual value is. We'll have to look. But I'm pretty impressed with the pre-cons. I've been pretty happy with the pre-cons that have come out this year. Yes. So we'll have that gameplay out and let us know your thoughts. That's what I got. Uh, all right, let's talk about those epilogue cards. So epilogue. I don't really get these. Like I kind of talked about it where it was like the end of the heist is like you get these cards, right? But then there's also some cards that look like like there's a big dinosaur in one. And it's kind of like they're crossing planes, right? And so yeah. they're going over other stuff. And I get that, but I'm confused as to where this is going story-wise. So I don't get it. Yeah, they're but- the ones that look like the crinkled paper, right? The epilogue cards? The, no, those are the vault cards. Do you remember the like yeah, little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. the epilogue is the one with the safe. Mm-hmm, the ones yes. with the safe. So we're yeah, going to talk about that's the one that those. has the sword on it. And it's the one that has the sword. It had the GT in it. Yes. Um, There was a card in there that I thought was really cool. It was called Molten Duplication. So it was a colorless and a red for a sorcery that says, create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control. Except that... Except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. It gains haste until end of turn, sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. So I thought that was like a pretty cool concept for something that's literally two mana. Yeah. Thought that was really cool. And then, of course, you mentioned some of the swords, the GTA. Um, There's another Torpor Orb. There is another Torpor Orb. It's you. Torpor Orb, that's me. Uh, And then we have the Transmutation font, which is you can tap it create your choice of a blood token a clue token or food token which is kind of cool because we haven't seen blood tokens in a while and then three and tap it to sacrifice three artifact tokens with different names search your library for an artifact card put it into the battlefield then shuffle activate only as a sorcery and that's for five mana that's again one of those vault cards the art for it's actually really cool looking like it's kind of metal looking um oh i opened that yeah yeah. it's a it's a cool card i don't know what it's gonna do i think maybe like it might be cool for like my Laura Croft deck or something like that. But I like that it makes blood tokens. Like I said, I haven't seen those around in a while. Um, and then the Lotus Ring. We were looking at that earlier. It is three mana for an indestructible artifact equipment. Mm-hmm. And you can equip it for three. Equip creature has plus three, plus three, and has vigilance. And tap to sacrifice this creature. Add three mana of any one color. So they did a bunch of cool stuff. They did. A bunch of cool stuff. Uh, the card I mentioned earlier where we saw loot again was called Omen Path Journey. It is three colorless and a green for an enchantment that says when it enters the battlefield, you search your library for up to five land cards that have different names, exile them, then shuffle. At the beginning of your end step, choose a card at random, exile with Omen Path Journey, and put it onto the battlefield tapped. So this card I like couldn't tell because Omen Path is like where they the, the kind of thing they travel on to get from plane to plane, yes. right? So I'm wondering if this is them getting into... Bloomborough, or do you think it's them coming from a different plane? Like, when was the last time we seen Vraska and Jace? I don't really know. Um, it might have been in. Was that were they in Eldraine? No. I don't know. If they I can't remember. In I think they were in like the aftermath. March of Machines. That's what I'm saying. Completed. So I don't know if this is them coming from or going to. I gotta watch my lore videos and catch up. We and have then to start doing like the yarn. Yeah, the literally that. Like figuring it out. But either way, I like that there is like good elements of storytelling in these cards. I think that's really cool. Um. And now we're going to leave the vault because there's even more cool cards. We have special guest cards. We do have special guest cards. One that I was Um, really excited to tell story about. (laughs) Yeah. So there's a Stoneforge Mystic and Mm -hmm. it looks awesome. She looks literally cool. She used some toner. Her hair is a little more silver now. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love Stoneforge Mystic and I'm very here for all the reprints it's been getting because the card is very expensive. Yes. Uh, She looks like a baddie. I actually did open a special of like the... I guess it's a special guest card because it has a little yeah. star thing mm-hmm. on it. Yeah. Uh, I got a scape shift. Oh. It looks really cool. Yeah. So I was excited to open that. Uh, did you Did you get any? I didn't finish opening my stuff, so I don't know. Oh, that's um, right. You didn't open it. I your... know. I'm still waiting to do my ASMR <sighs> stuff, but I had um, 
I know some of the ones we got were the Brazen Borrower, uh, Desert, Desertation, Morbid Opportunist, Mystic Snake, which a lot of people seem really excited for because yes. I got posted today. Notion Thief, which is my personal favorite. Yes. I love that card. And like the card art for before was fine. This one's like really cool. Um, the Port Razor, Prismatic Vista, Scape Shift, and then Stoneforge Mystic, like we talked about, which I think like is the like I know you love like probably the classic Stoneforge Mystic and a lot of people do, but yeah. I think that like it's a good tribute to that card. It is. It still embodies it. she's still, it. like, making a sword. Yeah. Like, the way she is in the original art where she's, like, you know, forging the blade. And she's the colors are so it, pretty on it. And it looks so it. cool. I really like that and one. It's just, it's great. It's a great reprint, and I love it. I think the Before. special guest cards are, like, a really good way to do reprints, too, because you're getting that, like, full art treatment, really beautiful styles. Um, they obviously did this with Ixalan before, and, and they did it with, like, Thrasios and Dargo, mm-hmm. which were cards that didn't have a new art style, too them but i also noticed speaking of that that there's a lot of those partners are here in the set so like yes. <laughs> partners um partners. They're, they're getting cards that aren't partner cards which people were hoping that the partner mechanic would come back it didn't sadly but I know, I we have thinking. some partners so there's a vile smasher in here there's also Crom, a new malcolm and so those like classic partner ca- like commanders that we know and love are here in their own individual cards yep. i thought that was pretty cool there's a lot of really cool art treatments in the set and then also a lot of set symbols which has been kind of confusing for us to jump between yes uh but we have the bonus sheets which i think the i don't know when the last time we saw them i thought it was eldraine was like the time there was a big focus on them um but these cards are freaking cool they look like we have the wanted posters which we'll talk about in a second but they look kind of like a like a like a newspaper listing like a like a big cool like crimply effect on the cards we opened some of them and they're freaking awesome i really like this art style uh there's a lot of big reprints in these that i think are really cool the devil was one of them which i know was needing a reprint for a long time mind break trap is in there which if you play the card you know it's expensive already i think like a regular one like on the low that is like beat up is like 40 50 bucks if you're lucky i think i paid like 70 for mine and the foil for that is like four hundred dollars so it's really nice that we're getting these cards that are like at a way better price and there's a lot more of them too and i opened a lot of them in my packs that i did open i opened my bundle there's a lot yeah. um i think i got maybe one or two actually in each play booster that yeah. i opened for the set um, and then I got some in the collector boosters as well um i, think I thought there was at be least more one rare. or two in there yeah i thought they were supposed to be like very rare but i'm glad that they included them because there's a lot of reprints too uh they're not standard legal but obviously if there's a card that's legal in a format and it's reprinted you can use it mm-hmm. uh they reprinted ley line binding which yeah. is a huge deal that great. cards becoming very expensive um and it's big staple in modern so they reprinted ley line binding i was happy to see that when i opened mm-hmm. it i was like oh my god um there's a cool thought seize cool thought seize mana drain abrupt decay surgical extraction uh looks like, really really cool i was happy because they reprinted uh skewer the critics mm-hmm. and it looks awesome so just like little cards like that make me really happy to see uh they reprinted rest in peace and not rest in peace yeah they uh did. they did that's the that's a different card though yeah, i'm yeah. trying to remember the other white card i'm trying to remember It'll come to me. They did do Rush in Peace, though, and a Grand Abolisher, which I thought was really cool. Yes. There's a bunch of other, like, random ones. But yes. the the list of cards for the bonus sheets, oh, my God, is huge. I think it's one of the biggest, like, lists that we went through for stuff. Like, I missed a lot of the stuff when I was opening it. I was like, oh, my God, I didn't even know that we had these cards. Oh, I know. I, yeah. I was surprised. I, I thought that there was, like, four, yeah. like, like almost, like, the list cards. I didn't realize how yeah. extensive it and was. And I also didn't think they'd be in so many packs, but I, yeah. I like that with the bonus sheets, there's a lot, like, at least, like, in Wilds of Eldrain, like, I probably opened, like, three or four Smothering Tides and, like, land tax cards, which... Yep are not cheap cards to buy so no. that was really nice to be able to have those be more accessible um i don't know what that is like for the resale value for like shops and stuff i really have no idea when there's that much frequency in it but i also don't know if people are opening like how much they're actually opening because i tend to buy a lot in my lgs so it might be a little different um and then outside of those cards i don't know if there was anything else you want to talk about but we do have those wanted posters yeah, I opened two. I yeah. opened two wanted posters. I got uh, the Malcolm and I got Vraska. I got uh, Gisa from when I opened. Like I said, I only opened the bundle and uh, I went with Ian to open his packs and I believe he got like a Jace and some other stuff. Not Jace, I'm sorry, a Oko. Um, but the one I really want is the Tiny Bones. I know, the Tiny Bones is so cute. Yeah, he's also like a CDH viable card, which is pretty cool. Um, but I just love Tiny Bones. He's super cute. Uh, he was the best thing in the video trailer. I don't know if I said that already. He was riding on uh what's his name uh big guy brain is not working big guy big flying guy demon rakdos <laughs> yeah 
Yes. That is his name. Uh, it was very cute. And so this Tiny Bones card is really good. It's a 1-1 one -one with Death Touch. And whenever Tiny Bones deals combat damage to a player, you may cast a target non-land permanent card from that player's graveyard. And mana of any type can be spent to cast that spell. So I do like these cards. The only thing that's like a little hard is the set symbols. Or not the set symbols. The um, mana symbols are in like weird spots. But other than that, I think they're designed really well. And it's like kind of necessary for the set. You need a Western poster. Yes. Like a little wanted Western poster. And of course, there's like Gisa and Gareth, like they mentioned those. Um, Sator Satoru from mm -hmm. Kamigawa's in it as well. Uh, we have a new Vraska card. So I thought that was a really cool art treatment. I think we got really spoiled with cool art treatments. We did. This whole set. We yeah. did. They're all really, really cool. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. That was a lot of words and a lot of different things. I would love to hear your overall pros and cons for the set. Um, obviously we are big into doing like drafts and pre-release and excited to play the set. There's a lot of cool archetypes that we can mess with, but I would love to hear just like your, your pros and cons. Um, so my pros for the set so far are, I love the new mechanics. I love the plot mechanic. It looks really, really fun. And I love the saddle. I love like the whole thing with the mounts mm -hmm. and all the different creatures. I love like crewing artifacts mm -hmm. i think that's such a cool feature that they added so excited to see it come back in a different way especially with the way that they themed it i like that they did a lot of like classic western themes and titles of things and they even have little hints and nods to classic songs or westerns mm -hmm. movies and stuff in there um so that was a big hit for me the only con i have with this set so far is i did notice on the um treatment of the cards that do look like the newspaper it's kind of hard to tell what the mana symbols say on some mm -hmm. of them it was really hard to read so i was like what the hell is this but that's such a minor thing that i don't think it really i agree though it's a little hard to like at first yeah so. yeah it wasn't too bad and then other than that i really don't have any complaints yet as far as gameplay goes i think i think it looks like it's going to be very very fun i'm excited for us to be in I think we're going to be in L.A. when this pre-release happens. So maybe yeah. we'll have to go to a game store out there. There have some good game stores we could try for sure. Um, yeah, I think the pros are very similar. Like, I really love the thematic bits of this. this. is something that you and I were, like, talking about for a while. And I'm really happy that it's, like, lived up to the expectation of, like, a fun set. Playability, we'll have to see. We'll probably talk about it after this, of course, um, on social media. But I really love the reprints. I think are really needed. Yes. I think they're really, like, hits for this. Um, the special guest cards, I'm really happy with those again. Like they're doing a great job with that. I love the partners coming back in like a silly way and having a new card for Crom and Vile Smasher I think is really cute too. Um, my misses for sure are the set symbol thing like you talked about. Um, just in general, the symbols are so confusing to figure out what card is which in this set. It's hard to can figure out too legality wise. Like yes. I've been looking at every card and I'm like, wait, this one's legal in what format now? This one's yeah. legal in all of them. This one's legal in only this and this. And this one's only, it's like, Make it more indistinguishable, please. Yeah, that part must be, like, really confusing to, yeah. like, figure out. Um, and, like, I, I'm actually really happy with the epilogue cards because I'm happy it's not another product that we have to buy. I'm yes. happy it's in the set, like, kind of where it should be. Um, I think some of the cards are pretty strong and seem really cool, and some of them seem, like, fine. Um, it is a little confusing, like, as a player, like, especially if you're not following the story and understanding what's going on, especially those set symbols like I talked about. But overall, I think that design-wise, it is a absolute hit. Um, I would say so far, this is probably, like, my favorite set that's come out mm -hmm. this year. Uh, we have had, what, uh, Thunder Junction? No, Thunder Junction is this set. We had Fallout. We had Murders of Karloff Manor. Anything else? Uh, Karloff Manor was the first one of this year. Yeah, yeah. And then we went into Fallout. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so far, this is, like, definitely my top set out of those, I would say. Yeah. So we will be playing those pre-cons like I mentioned. You can check out our upgraded pre-con video. And we'll be making some new commanders from the set to play on the show. Absolutely. Yeah. Excited to make Bill. Very, very stoked. If you want to go pick up some singles for yourself, you could definitely go check out TCG Player with the link in the description down below. We'll also be um, doing some Western-related things. We're dressing up. So We're if you want to see us in silly costumes, and by that I mean just like really fresh drip, definitely check out our pre account game. Check out our content. We have some cool ambassador content coming out in general for this set, and I think it'll be really fun to watch if that's your thing. If you enjoyed this podcast, please be sure to give it a like and a comment on YouTube. And if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please remember to give us a review. It helps us more than you know. And we truly appreciate you taking the time to listen to us today and come hang out. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media to keep up with what we're doing. And if you are a patron in the Discord, please 
let us know what you want to hear from us, what you want to see from us, what you want us to do, because we love hearing from you. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.